Hello, everybody. We're Embrace the Suck 21. Yes, we are. I'm Spencer. And I'm Daniel. We actually Embrace the Globe 21. I'm so yeah, used we to are. saying that. Yeah. It's all right. It's a three-year thing. Don't worry about Y'all knew what this was. But anyway, yeah. we are checking out 101 facts about Brazil. And... I just want to say before we get into this, uh, thank y'all for finally finding the uh, Geography Now Brazil video for our Brazilian <laughs> friends. Hey, we put that out a month ago and then it blew up out of nowhere. So, thank you yes. for all the our Brazilian friends that have come over. We appreciate y'all. Yes. Yes. And uh, if I, we we know that these 101 facts videos are definitely dated, but they get the conversation well, rolling, and that's what we're looking for is. More facts about Brazil. More videos to check out. You have a light yeah. itineraries. It's Boots whoever on the ground. It's whoever puts puts these hundred and one facts. It's usually opinionated and whatever. But we got to get through them because that that's like you just said. It starts a conversation. Let us know the stuff that isn't covered. That's the whole purpose of this. Hundred you know? hundred and one percent. <laughs> Talk. Right. You ready to go in? Yeah, man. Let's do it. Three, two, one. Hola, mother factors. Mio nome et Sam. Mm, did I say that right? Maybe. And today I'm going to be talking to you all about the home of the Samba, most of the Amazon, and Neymar, who I'm told is some kind of sports person. Arguably the best Portuguese speaking country in all of South America, certainly my favourite, Brazil. But what does a glove full of ants have to do with adulthood? How do Brazilians get out of prison using only a stationary exercise bike? And is music and fashion always the fashion at the Copacabana? Or do they take bank holidays off? Two out of three of those questions are going to be answered. So, pull out your Portuguese phrase book and put your hands in the air like Christ of Redeem Air for 101 facts about Brazil. Number one. Making up a whopping 47% of the continent, Brazil is by some distance the largest country in South America. In fact, you could stuff the smallest country, Suriname, into Brazil roughly 52 times. Although, wow. I wouldn't recommend that. It just sounds like <laughs> a lot of bother for not much payoff. Number two. Outside of South America, Brazil ranks number five in the world, both in terms of population size and geographical area, spreading its 210 million inhabitants across over 3 million square miles. Wow. Number three. Wow. It's believed that humans first settled in Brazil at least 32,000 years ago. However, this belief is not widely shared amongst the 31% of Americans who believe that humankind is only 10,000 years old. <laughs> number four. <laughs> I see what he did there. Very, I see what yeah, he there did there. There we go. <sighs> Despite this, Brazil was officially discovered in 1500 by Portuguese diplomat Pedro Alvarez Cabral. He's basically Brazil's Christopher Columbus, except he actually went to the country he's supposed to have discovered. That's the way I like to live my life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's just tearing us apart here with the whole Christopher Columbus guy. Oh, man. All right. Uh, uh, all right. Still. All the stuff he just mentioned, didn't know. Mm-hmm. Yep. What are we at? Seven, eight? I can't. I've lost count at this point. Oh, my God. He's moving quite fast. Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. Well, uh, yeah. I might have to be hard on this pause uh, break. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's get, let's, let's do it. Let's at All least, right. let's, re, we'll reconvene at 20. Okay. Something like that. <laughs> Although there is evidence that other Portuguese explorers beat him to the punch. Number five. Brazil's first European colonizers were met by the native Tupinamba people, one part of the over three million believed to have been living in the country at the time. Number six. There's some evidence that the two peoples worked together for a while, but as you may have guessed, things didn't go fantastically. And to cut a long, not very happy story short, Brazil's native population has now dropped to around 900,000, or 0.4% of the country. Number six. Mm, that's a very small percentage. I would be curious to see how the indigenous of Brazil live compared to the indigenous of the United States and Canada and how, like, are they very much integrated or are they not? Uh, I, I feel like in this, I feel like in this day and age for the, uh, for the most part, I've, I, uh, you know, I want to retract that. Never mind. I feel like indigenous peoples are more celebrated now than they ever have been you know yeah i think but, that's fair. but at what cost you know yeah, what i mean because yeah. once you come over and explore your germs also come over to explore and they yeah. stay and they wreak havoc 
They do. As that as is not just from from I guess violence against the the native uh peoples, but at the same time the germs. That that uh-huh. that wiped out at least in the US that wiped out tons of people. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Is the uh, like the the flu or the smallpox or whatever was happening at that time. Yeah. Yeah, that wasn't very nice of us. <laughs> we discovered you now we're going to decimate you with a cold. Damn. <laughs> Pretty much. 7. Brazil was then ruled by the Portuguese for over 300 years, until it officially gained independence on Independence Day. Yes, that's right, September the 7th, 1822. Okay, so that's their July 4th, is September 7th. Yep. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There you so... go, September 7th. Hey, man, that's close to your birthday. Yeah, I'm the, on the 11th, so uh, both Brazil and I are Virgos. There you go. I mean, definitely not 1822, but hey, <laughs> hey, but still, there you go. still, they got Virgo energy. Hey, now, now, now we know what to put out on September 7th. Yeah, something Brazilian. There you go. Mm-hmm. Number eight. It wasn't all smooth sailing, though, with the Dutch trying to spoil the party. Our oh, classic. I had a goddamn plan! By invading them in 1630. However, the Portuguese rulers saw them off by 1654. Number 9. In 1695, gold was first discovered in the country, and boy, was there a lot of it. In the 18th century, a whole load of the world's gold reserve was Brazilian, with estimates reaching as high as 80%. Number wow. 10. But the first major commodity in Portuguese Brazil was the red dye of the trees from which the country gets its name, the Brazil wood. However, being the namesake for a whole country wasn't enough to stop the Portuguese harvesting it to near extinction, so well done, guys. Number 11. In Brazil's official language of Portuguese, the country is called Brasil with an S. Good luck remembering that one. Number 12. I mean, we know that to say Rio de Janeiro instead of Rio de Janeiro. So I I I get that, and like I said on our previous video, I understand, and I will try. No promises. Yeah, no promises, uh, y'all. I will I will call it Rio. Mm-hmm. We'll there leave it go. at that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, or, but I mean, yeah, I'll, I'll just call it Rio, and I'm not talking about a effing river, you know. Yeah. Use or, in context. Yeah, or or a song from Duran Duran. <laughs> <laughs> Damn you. Now that's how it's going to be in my effing head. I yeah. hate you. That is annoying. <laughs> I did not want that song in my head. Yeah, and you can't even sing it to get it out or else we'll get copyright stricken. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> oh. But in the early 14th century, Brazil also appeared under the moniker Terra de Papega, which in case you weren't too savvy with your Portuguese, translates to the land of parrots. Or if you're following Google Translate, the much more terrifying Parrot Earth. <laughs> Number three. Should we live? Ah, uh, we shouldn't live on Parrot Earth. <laughs> parrot Earth. <laughs> I, I mean, it's they... like Christian Mingle. Is that is that different? Is that a different site? Yeah, I oh, think it's a different God. site. But it might be full of uh, Jimmy Buffett uh, fans. R.I.P. <laughs> for all the parrot heads. Oh my God! Now I got Margaritaville in your head. Now right, Margaritaville. Uh, I'll, I'll take Rio over Margaritaville. <laughs> uh, man. Uh. Thirteen. Despite being one of ten or des countries where Portuguese is the official language, Brazil is the only one or um in South America to speak the lingo. Mm. Number 14. Size isn't everything, I've been reassured through tears, which is why Brazil's capital was the suitably titled Brasilia instead of the larger city of Sao Paulo. And of course, I'm speaking strictly geographically, and there is absolutely zero context there. Number 15. In fact, Sao Paulo never even got a look in, because before the city of Brasilia was constructed in 1960, Rio de Janeiro held the reins, until it was decided the capital should be more central and sound more Brazili y. Number 16. Brazil's coastline on the eastern side of South America is the 16th longest in the world at 7,491 kilometers or 4,590,173.41 clones of the legendary Brazilian footballer Pelé. They all lay down head to toe, which is a haunting image, isn't it? Haunting. Ah, Rest in power, Pelé. Pelé. Man, and what what was was the quote from the uh, beauty of football? Is it God's God's gift... uh, it uh, gives you the gift to play football. 
it's something. I'm blanking on it right now, but oh well. Oh man, okay, okay, yeah. Someone will correct us in the comments. 17. Brazil is effectively the Ned Flanders of South America, given that it shares borders with all but two South American countries, Chile and Ecuador. Number 18. Despite being roughly 15 times bigger than France, Brazil only has three different time zones, perhaps because France are hogging them all with 12. Number 19. Sao Paulo, that place that inexplicably... That's a little confusing right there. Did they just say that France has 12 time zones? It must be territories. Has to include territories. I, I think he's talking shit right now. It, it has makes... to be. There's no fucking way that France has 12 effing time zones. Yeah, it, it, may, it would make more sense that Brazil has three. And the one that I base the release time off of is uh, Rio de Janeiro. Uh, yeah. Because we're trying to appeal to them and make yes. friends in there. Yes, friends. Yeah. Friends! All right. Wait, wait, wait. Different channel. Sorry. Different channel. Yep. Poking <laughs> <laughs> them all with 12. Number 19. Sao Paulo, that place that inexplicably isn't Brazil's capital, is also the 10th richest city in the world, which is expected to rise to the 6th by 2025. It also has the largest economy by GDP of any city in the Southern Hemisphere. Number 20. In 1945, Brazil was one of the 51 founding members of the United Nations, and is among its top 20 contributors to their peacekeeping operations. Number 21. Amazon, the river one, not the rainforest one or the exploited shop one, is the second longest river in the world after the Nile, and Brazil is one of the four countries that it calls home, alongside Colombia, Peru, and Ecuador. Number 22, oh, oh, I'm all Brazilian. The other Amazon, not the one that developed popular shows like The Man in the High Castle or Transparent, the forest one, accounts for over half the world's remaining rainforests. Well, 60% of that is contained in Brazil. Number 23. In the majority of Brazil, the climate is tropical, which means, because I know you're wondering, that it's a non-arid climate in which all 12 months have been temperatures of warmer than 18 degrees Celsius, or 64 degrees for you Fahrenheiters out there. Number 24. Brazil has the second most airports in the world, with over 4,000 of them. What? Granted, America is first, with over 13,000, but that means their airports are the worst, Brazil's are the best, and Mexico's airports have hairy chests. Number- <laughs> Hairy chests? Ugh. <laughs> <sighs> I don't know, man. I, I'm just gonna move on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Twenty-five. Airports. The most popular sport in Brazil is football or football. So no, I'm not gonna put bracket soccer because the Portuguese language clearly agrees with us that the Americans are the ones that are wrong. Number twenty. It's called soccer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, this is the listen. Before we start all these journeys on the on the interwebs, right? I knew it as football as well. Football. And and I, I knew it as soccer. And yeah, yeah, that's that's just letting you guys know that is a heated topic here. Because mm -hmm. my God, have we been put through the ringer on that effing word? Yeah, on, on the other sport. On the other channel. <laughs> God. Anyway. Yep. Yeah, and we I saw comments underneath the geography now. It's like we don't all like f f football and uh carnival. I'm like, well, then you're no fun. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, come on, man. That's like the, the I've, I've had some of the best moments, best memories watching Brazil play soccer or football. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, the one with the checkered ball. Yeah, that one. That one. Yeah, great fun. Great fun. Someday yeah, that sport will catch on. Yeah, one of these days. 26. In Brazil, not only does an Osama Bin Laden themed bar exist, which is just, I mean, why? But there's more than one of them. Bin Laden's cave, the bar, not the secret extremist hiding. Hold on, hold on. Do I need to run that no. back? No. No. No, it doesn't. Can you? There is no effing way there is a but there is no way. Can you take that back a little bit? I gotta hear that. Yeah. Holy crap. <laughs> that took you by surprise. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> Holy shit. Uh. Oh Number 26. God. In Brazil, not only does an Osama Bin Laden themed bar exist, which is just, I mean, why? But there's more than one of them. 
Bin Laden's cave, the bar, not the secret extremist hiding place, can be found in Niteroi. And Bar du Bin Laden in Sao Paulo is even run by an Osama lookalike, which can't have been a profitable career before 2011, could it really? Number 20. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> we can stop the video here. Excuse me, that is absolutely effing awesome. <laughs> so do Navy SEALs drink for free? Is that a thing? Oh, uh, what? More importantly, do Barack Obama look alike drink for free? Ah, uh, I'm very, very intrigued, confused, hurt, but overjoyed that there's <laughs> something like this like exists out there. But fair enough. Fair enough. Okay, cool. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh God. Do you, do, uh, are you okay, man? Whole, that'd be a whole different. I wonder, do they serve car bombs there? Ah! <laughs> or any kind of bombs? Uh, Ye Jaeger bombs. Jaeger bombs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. Oh. oh, my God. Oh, my God. That's awesome. Yeah. The yeah. amount of insane terrible fun you could have with that oh yeah. my god what, oh uh, man yeah i wonder if they have a public restroom because uh <laughs> if, you, if you need to blow blow up the bathroom that's a whole different that's a whole different thing there you know what i mean <laughs> i love that i love uh, that oh my god okay cool sorry i had to ruin it that way we could move it's, on <laughs> yeah we gotta move on that is a, yeah he put that at 27 26 uh, 20 yeah that was 26 yeah well uh it's all right it's all right uh he probably didn't know any americans would watch this so it's, it's <laughs> cool because i would have nestled that deeply at like a 90 spot yeah like 99 or something yeah uh. <laughs> 27 the bestest beach in the whole world no not felix though i mean according to TripAdvisor, can be found in brazil Bairro de Sancho is located in the archipelago of Fernando de Noronha. The 21 surrounding islands form a marine park that boasts green and hawksbill turtles, as well as whales, lemon and reef sharks, clownfish, anemones and parrotfish. Number 28. The country's official motto is Ordom e Progresso, which in my neck of the woods means order and progress. Number 29. Yay. São Vicente is Brazil's oldest city and was the location of Portugal's first permanent settlement in the Americas. Established in 1532, the city is the birthplace of footballer Rubinho. And I'd guess at least six or seven other people between now and then. Number 64. <laughs> no? Number 30. 64% of the Brazilian population is Catholic, clocking in at around 130 million people, the largest Catholic population in the world. You can't throw a stone in that country without hitting a Catholic. Although, don't do that because that is a hate crime. <laughs> Number 31. However, Brazil only managed the second largest population of Christians, after the good old US of A. It does have the largest population of Christians in South America, though, but seeing as Brazil is to South America what Emperor Palpatine is to the Senate, that's not exactly surprising. Number 32. The national dish of Brazil is Rodrigo Santoro. Dish, dish. Oh, no, sorry, that's not what I mean. The actual national dish is called feijoada, and it's a stew of beans and beef and pork. Mm. Number 33. In the past two years, a genre known as Brazilian funk has been spreading in popularity throughout the rest of the world. Derived from Miami bass and gangster rap, two of my fave genres, the genre benefits from repeated beats and samples, which allow producers to release up to 100 songs in a month, each measurably funkier than the last. Number 34. Nice. Brazil is home to the second largest number of Japanese people by country. Between 1.5 and 2.5 million Brazilians have Japanese ancestry, but wow. the country's Japanese population was pipped to the post by a country called Japan, who I'm told have quite a few. Number yeah. 35. Each year, the streets of Brazil fill with over 2 million people a day between the Friday before Ash Wednesday and midday on Ash Wednesday itself for Carnival de Brazil. In various cities across the world, tourists and locals make Kiss proud by partying all day and all of the night until Lent. Number 30. Yeah, and we did a video on that. And nobody watched it. They don't know it exists. Yeah. But we have one, guys. Yeah, it's, linked, one. To, it's linked at the end of the video. 
go watch it, please, because that hey. looked like a lot of fun. And I'd love to go there one day. It definitely did, man. That mm -hmm. looked like a blast. Hell yeah. 37. No? Number 36. Rio de Janeiro's carnival alone is frequently referred to as the world's largest party, most notably by the people at Guinness. They crowned it the world's largest carnival in 2004 after it attracted 400,000 visitors from outside the country alone and generated $165 million. Nice. Number 37. At the south end of Rio lies the Copa Copacabana Beach. This nice. four-kilometer stretch of beach was home to another record breaker in 1994, when Rod Stewart, of all people, held the largest yep. gig of all time for New Year's Eve. The 3.5 million attendees was equal in 1997, but is yet to be beaten. Number 38. Yeah, yeah, we did a video of largest crowds ever, <sighs> which nobody watched. No, <laughs> no. We learned that fact. 5 million. Yeah. That's... That is just a stupid amount of people. Like That's... That's basically a city. Statistically, I think a hundred people needed to have died in that concert. And at least statistically, there had to have been at least how many births? You know what I mean? Like st numbers. Like that's insane. 3.4 million people. It's a lot. God, oh, man. That's a lot. That's a I would lot. not, I would not swim in that beach for a good year. Let that yeah. water definitely clean itself out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Eight. According to Brazil's Indian Affairs Department, Funai, as many as 100 uncontacted native tribes live in Brazil's Amazon rainforest. And that's pretty much all I can tell you for sure. They're pretty private people, if you hadn't guessed. Number 39. Between speaking and signing, the Brazilian population can speak roughly 210 languages. Not each, though. That would be mental. Number 40. Brazil's answer to a bar mitzvah is considerably more painful, owing to the Satari Mawe ritual, in which Brazilian boys have to wear gloves filled with bullet ants for 10 minutes before they are declared adults. Sounds easy enough, said no one ever, but wait, there's more. They have to do this 20 times. I'd rather say a child. Would certainly make my conversations about Spider-Man bedsheets easier. Number four. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, what? hold up, hold up, hold up. You gotta put fire ants on your dick for... No, 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 it's not... I don't think it's their dick. I thought it was their hands. Their hands, or so. Uh, okay, okay, that makes it a little easier, but not by much. <laughs> Where'd you get that, dude? I, I don't know, man. My mind's in the gutter. I'm sorry. What? <laughs> on your dick. Uh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, but you gotta put them on your hands for ten minutes. Or 20, 20, minutes, times. 20 minutes, 20 times, 10, 10 minutes, 20 times. You know why they're called bullet ants is because the bite is equivalent to a gunshot, like a wound. Like, I, I believe it. Get out of here. Yeah. Get fucked. I'm not yeah. doing that. I'll stay mm -hmm. a child. Nope. And yep. Proudly. If it means I'm not fucking fingering bullet ants. I'm yeah. good. I'm not doing that. No, I'm sorry. I'm not. I could. I may, no, I'm not even. Not even for the first round of ten minutes, twenty times, dude. No. Uh -uh. Mm -mm. Hell no. Hell no. No. Nope. If I marry a Brazilian woman, we have a son. I'm sorry, he's not doing that. Are you sure? Because like, I would. But <laughs> I mean, not for me. It's like just, just do it because everyone else is doing it. It's, yeah, yeah. Bullet ants in the glove. Yeah, cool. Do it. I didn't, you know, and just be there as as more of a um, empathic, you know, empathy, not really uh, sympathy. Just be like, oh, yeah, I'm so sorry, son. It hurt when I did it. Isn't that what all parents do? Yeah, all <laughs> you know, lie to their 100%, children. 100%, 100%. Do it. I did it in a video game or something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah something like that. Oh, my God. <sighs> Damn. 41. Since 2008, Brazil has provided free gender reassignment surgery after a court order established the treatment as a constitutional right for transgender people. But it wasn't until 2009 that it was legalized to change their assigned name and gender on birth certificates. The meaning of life. There are various replicas of America's Lady Liberty cropping up daily around the world, all varying greatly in quality. But a select few were actually made by designer of the original statue, Frederick Bartholdi, including the Bangu Statue of Liberty near an understated mall in a neighborhood in Rio de Janeiro. Wow. Number 43. 
Following Nigeria, Brazil has the world's second largest black population in the world, more even than any other African nation, with 56% of the country's population identifying as black. Wow, like the second most behind Nigeria. Wow. wow. That's than interesting. An, more than an African country, like more than a lot of African countries. Well, if you, they're, they're close. They're closer to each other, aren't they? Right, right. Um, I'm just trying to think, like you have whatever's whatever's on that the country on that, you know what I'm talking about. How the shape of Africa, that it juts out into the Atlantic, and Brazil juts out into the Atlantic. Yeah, yeah. Latitudinally, they are close. They're probably closer to Africa than we are to Europe. Makes sense. Makes sense because the you know, the Atlantic Ocean, at least the top part of it, is more it's, uh It just wider. widens up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Huh. All right, all right. All right. I'll give you that one. All right. Number 44. In 2016, Brazil hosted the Olympics. But wait, there's more. That made them the first South American country ever to host them. Nice. Number 45. <clears throat> Around 6.4 million tourists make the trip to Brazil each year, although as a percentage of its population, that's one of the lowest numbers in the country. Of those tourists, roughly half of them make like an animated bird voiced by Jesse Eisenberg and flock to Rio. Number 46. Brazil's capital of Brasilia was built over the space of just 41 months, between 1956 and 1960, knocking Rio off its Jesse Eisenberg perch as capital after almost 200 years. Number 47. That construction was overseen by its designer, Oscar Niemeyer. He designed it to resemble a shape of an airplane when viewed from above, which must be pretty terrifying for pilots to try and land there. Number 48. Niemeyer has individually designed more than 500 structures, one of the most iconic of which is the Cathedral of Brasilia, with its 16 90-ton columns and 66-foot bell tower. It also has an underground tunnel entrance and three hanging angels inside. Number 49. During the late 18th century, Brazil's GDP soared owing to the rubber boom of South America and the heavy export of rubber from within the Amazon. And everyone prospered, other than the indigenous tribes and anyone who breathes air from the Amazon, but so like everyone. But hey, rubber, woo! Number Yay, rubber. We all have a use for rubber. Yeah. Uh, yep. You gotta get it from somewhere. Yeah. Uh, you get what I'm saying. Yep. 50. According to the Monga Bay website, Brazil is the most biodiverse country on the whole planet, and probably other planets too, to be honest. That's down to the roughly 4 million plant and animal species that hang their tiny hats in the country. Hmm. Number 51. Among these various floras and faunas are a load of monkeys. So many, in fact, that Brazil contains more species of monkey than any other country. Number 52. The Brazilian national anthem. Yeah, <laughs> that's crazy, man. You shuck your head. It's like there's more monkeys in. Uh, Brazil than anywhere else. What? It's crazy. Okay. Yeah. Man, I'm learning. Yeah, yeah. Monkey than any other country. Number 52. The Brazilian national anthem, which is titled Who'd Have Thought It? Brazilian national anthem is made up of two stanzas, each with seven verses. Each stanza has the same tune, but by Brazilian law, you can't just sing one on its own. On the flip side of that, I barely know any of ours. I know God save our gracious... Oh, who is it? Noel Edmonds or someone like that? <laughs> Number 53. While the Iraqi city of Najaf holds the less coveted title of being the world's biggest cemetery, at an impressive, or compensating for something, 108 metres tall, the highest vertical cemetery in the world can be found in Santos, Brazil. Number 54. Wow. That's, that's a huge cemetery. Up. That's... Where's the cemetery? That skyscraper. What? Yeah, that's that, crazy. That's, yeah, I've never seen a cemetery that goes up. They're all in the ground. You, But you've been to like New Orleans and stuff, right? No, I've never been to oh, New okay. Orleans. Okay. Do yeah, it's crazy. That there? Well, yeah, I mean, it's, 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 well, I mean, yeah, because, well, their whole city, the whole, whole state is sinking. Yeah. Right. So they have to build up. So all right. you, you don't want to poke a hole in the ground. Because hey, you're going to be in the ocean, you know what I mean? Yeah, but yeah, that's crazy. Because in Colombia they do that too. They have like catacombs, like uh, not catacombs. I forgot what they're called. I forgot what they're called. I did forget what they're called just now. Um, they're not catacombs. Oh my god, mausoleums. I feel like it is. 
I'm not sure. Yeah. Anyway, I, I'll, I'll remember it probably by 100. <laughs> okay. Okay. After the US, Brazil produces the second most ethanol in the world. And together, the two are responsible for 85% of the world's ethanol. This ethanol can be used in alcohol as fuel and for bacteria wipe to clean the wounds if you combine the two. Number 55. Voting has been a right for the women of Brazil for just 72 years, having been legalized in 1946. That means when baby Rod Stewart was born, Brazilian women still weren't allowed to vote. Number 56. Brazil has been the world's largest coffee exporter for over 150 years, supplying roughly 80% of the world's java in the 1920s. That's fallen to about 33% today, but it still accounts for 5.7 billion pounds of grounds of coffee around the world each year. Number 50. All right, so that's, I mean, that's that part of the world. A lot of coffee comes from there. Yep. And in fact, uh, should we talk about it on this channel? I can cut this part out, but. What well, about no, your coffee? Well, uh, well, yeah, no, my, well, yeah, I guess we, we don't have to talk about it because it's not available to be bought anywhere else other than in the United States. All right, I'll, I'll cut this part out then. T7. Despite this, or maybe because of it, Brazilians aren't too keen on the beverage themselves. Only what? drinking 5.5 kilograms per person each year, ranking 15th in the world for coffee consumers. Instead, Finland tops that list with a medically terrifying 12 kilograms per person. Number. Oh my god. So they what? don't even get high on their own supply. Which is why they just export all of it. Like, uh, what is okay. this bean? Meh. Send it. Like... That's that's uh, because listen to be honest, Colombians drink a ton of coffee. Yeah, yeah, Sur it's 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 a coffee country. Yeah, surprising that Brazil doesn't drink their coffee. It's that's 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 odd. odd. Yeah, yeah, we've learned that Australia drinks a lot of it. Certainly, we drink a lot of it in the states. So yes, yes, one hundred percent. But that's crazy. Okay, okay, mm, goodness hmm. gracious. Fifty-eight. The highest point in Brazil is the peak of Pico da Nebelina, or Mist Peak, on Brazil's Venezuelan border. It comes in at 2,994 meters above sea level, or roughly 78.8 Christ the Redeemer statues stacked on top of one another. It was the first ascended 12 years after Everest in 1965. Number 59. Dr. Mengele, who you might know as the Angel of Death, after his sordid experimentations and fascination with twins, fled to Brazil post-war. This led to rumors he was responsible for the high rate of twin births in the town of Candido Godoy, where 10% of children born are twins. Number 60. What? It, what? <laughs> I've never heard that. Yeah, I think we, we touched on it. We touched on it, how um, some of the, 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 the Nazi party fled. Yeah, but they and fled they, to Argentina. Oh, oh, not just Argentina, but all of South Af South America. Yeah. And and Mengele was one of them. And got it. It's like, was it? But was it? High amount of twins. Did a lot of twins testing stuff out there, and the we won't talk about it. But yeah, yeah, Brazil. It's a, it's interesting, interesting. A uh, little, little bit of, little bit of history right there. Got it. <laughs> Got it. Edo Godoy, where 10% of children born are twins. Number 60. In a questionable trend, tours of Brazil shanty towns or favelas have become popular in the country. One of the most popular towns in which to tour is Rio Santa Marta, a colorful town that's been graced by Michael Jackson, Madonna, and Queen Bee herself. Not that Queen Bee, as in, you know, Beyonce. Number 61. Amongst Brazil's less enticing tourist traps are Sao Paulo's infamous traffic jams. According to the city's traffic management agency, they're among the worst in the world, with a record-breaking 309 kilometer congestion blocking up the city in 2013. Mm. Number 62. If medals were given for the popularity of different surnames in Brazil, then gold would go to silver. The ubiquitous surname comes from the Latin word for forest. Number 63. The Christ the Redeemer statue in Rio de Janeiro has been giving the world a great big hug since construction finished in 1931. It weighs a hefty 635 tons, is 38 meters tall with its pedestal, and has been described as one of the new seven wonders of the world. Nintendo 64. Brazil contains 21 UNESCO World Heritage Sites, in fact. That's 14 cultural and 7 natural, because I know you're gonna ask. One of the most famous is the Iguazu National Park, where you can find the Iguazu Falls, one of the largest waterfalls in the world, where 275 drops span across its 1.7 mile width. Number 65. 
As well as giant waterfalls, the park is also the habitat of various rare and endangered species, like the giant otter and giant anteater, and some other normal-sized ones which aren't as interesting. <laughs> Number 66. In 2012, Rio de Janeiro's Jardim Gramajo was closed, bringing an end to the world's largest open-air landfill. At its peak, the site was receiving over 9,000 tons of rubbish every day, providing oh shelter to the more than 20,000 people who built homes from the trash. Oh my god. Number 67. Brazil is responsible for a huge share of the world's orange exports, and over half of the orange juice bottled by major companies comes from Brazil. And Brazil are using the funds from this $1.4 billion industry to buy out Florida's orange production companies too, like a really healthy game of Monopoly. Number s- What? A lot so of they got that- they got that game. They got that orange game. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I was about to say, like, we're good to go with oranges when because of Florida and probably parts of California too, but apparently I guess, not. I guess not. I guess Brazil is just like, I'm going to scoop up all the orange juice. Mm. Man, I, I I didn't know that at all, dude. Yeah. What? I'll be thinking about that next time I pour a glass of OJ and some vodka in it. Yeah. What? Okay. Cool, man. Mm. Shit. Sixty-eight. Sand dunes in Brazil are capable of reaching heights of up to forty meters. That's like being swamped by two hundred eighty-five point seven of Brazil's one rail notes stacked long ways on top of one another, but much less financially beneficial. Number 69. Uh -huh. Carnival. As far as transport goes in Brazil, which is very far, you have the choice of the 10th largest railway system in the world at 28,000 kilometers, or the 4th largest roadway network with around 1,752,000 kilometers of roads. Wow. Number 70. That's a 15 lot. 15 of Brazil's cities have a population of over 1 million people. Oh, you didn't think I could list them. I can list them. I can list them. Counting down. Sao Paulo, Rio de Janeiro, Salvador, Fortaleza, Belo Horizonte, Brasilia, Curitiba, Manaus, Recife, Belém, Porto Alegre, Guiana, Guarulhos, Campinas, and Nova Iguaçu. Okay, and I didn't stop once there to check pronunciations. Not once. <laughs> you sure about that? Hey, you sure about that, man? Mm -hmm. um, sure, it wasn't edited. Fifteen with over a million. Is that that's what he said? Lot. Fifteen. That's a, that's. Well, I mean, I mean, it's a massive country, dude. Yeah, it's a, it's yeah. a massive country. Yeah. I, I'm not. I'm not surprised about that. I'm not. I. I, I kind of am, but I. <sighs> you haven't heard it said out loud yet. Yeah. Until now, it, it it's not like oh my god, but makes sense. Mm -hmm. Makes sense that any kind of city is just packed. Just yeah. Packed. Okay. 100%. 100%. Number 71. In 1969, in what has surely got to be adapted into the next Oceans film, a gang of Brazilian bus drivers were arrested for using beetles to crawl into fare boxes and return them with stolen coins. But you can consider your faith in the justice system restored because the thieving beetles were also arrested. Number 71. Wow. <laughs> that I didn't think about that, how you can get bugs to do that. Well, who... Who had the time and or patience to do that? That is a very long, slow game to play. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, I was going to make a, a joke there, but I don't have it. I don't have it. <sighs> Man, uh, we'll get to it at 100. We'll both we'll both say what we got to say out loud. Yeah, yeah. Because I forgot my word. Yeah, yeah. In 1958, Sao Paulo City Council elections were marred by corruption, and the people needed a talisman for their sense of disenfranchisement. They found this talisman in Kakareko, a two-ton black rhino from the Sao Paulo Zoo. Kakareko's candidacy ultimately wasn't accepted by electoral officials, but that didn't stop him pulling in 100,000 votes, more than any other party in the election. Number 73. What? Wow. A rhino got 100,000 votes? Yeah. What? What? <laughs> So well, no, no, I'm not going to say nothing because, hey, listen, didn't uh, Harambe get a bunch of votes, too? I was going to say, like, he got, like, 15,000 <laughs> nationwide, like, in 2016. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, okay, okay. I was going to, yeah, I was like, okay, fair enough, 100,000. There you go. Wow. Okay, fair, <laughs> fair. Yeah, fair. or, right. or uh, the one time that, uh, uh, like, in 2014 or something like that, Ficus for Congress. Uh, Michael Moore did a uh, a documentary on that. Uh, ran a ficus in a uh, uh, a congressional election because no, the same person just keep kept winning because nobody ran against them. What? 
I didn't hear about that. I don't <laughs> yeah, even know about that. That's crazy. Google it. Ficus for Congress. I'm there for it. All right. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> As of 2016, roughly 86% of the Brazilian population live in urban areas. Number 74. On the border separating Brazil and Paraguay lies the Itaipu Dam. Standing at 196 meters tall and 7.7 .7 kilometers long, the dam is the second largest producer of hydroelectricity in the world, which is pretty, uh, <laughs> damn impressive. Ah! Uh, this thing on? Damn impressive. Ah! Uh, Number 75. Brazil's official currency is the Brazilian Real, but don't get used to it, because the fickle country changed its currency eight times between 1942 and 1994, and who knows what it will be tomorrow. Hopefully, Jennifer Lawrence's. <laughs> number 76. Brazil's economy has primarily depended on a number of items throughout the years. During the early years of colonization, it was Brazil wood. Then in the 16th and 17th century, it was sugarcane. In the 18th century, it was gold and diamond, and it's been coffee from the 19th century onwards. Got number it. 77. Brazil is to imported oil what Will Smith's fist is to an alien face. Because in 2006, the country became energy- <laughs> Funny how that, how that joke aged. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. I, I would- I'm, I'm sure that uh, this guy, I don't know what his name is, has learned to keep Will Smith's name out your damn mouth! 100%, man. God, you don't- <laughs> <laughs> oh what a, what oh god all right <laughs> god i love that uh, all right. but you know what though that's that's kind of interesting now that you pause it like their cash crop has changed which is is very unique for a country yeah like yeah. that's actually very amazing to have like your main export change like that usually doesn't happen at right. all mm -hmm. so that's that's pretty cool man that's pretty cool to see that you know, and it's like a natural res like that. That was a no shit Sherlock kind of thing. No, no <laughs> shit. It's a natural resource. <laughs> How else do you want to? Like, I'm stupid. Um, but yeah. Anyway, anyway, I, what? Anyway, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good again. That's 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 Internet Explorer. Lord, yeah. You. <laughs> like yeah. No, I'm good. I'm good now. Let's proceed with this video, please. <laughs> God damn. At least I catch myself in yeah. the ridiculousness. <laughs> hey. Uh. Is to imported oil what Will Smith's fist is to an alien face. Because in 2006, the country became energy independent, having previously relied on oil from outside their borders. Mm. Number 78. Brazil is the longest country in the world, but remember, it's how you use Brazil that matters, okay? <laughs> From north to south, the country spans 4,395 kilometers, giving it the top spot over second place Chile, although I'm told Chile has the best personality. <laughs> Number 79. Pantanal, which can be found in Paraguay, Bolivia, but mostly our boy Brazil, is the world's largest tropical wetland at over 70,000 square miles. It also has the highest concentration of incontinent wildlife. Oh no, sorry, the most wildlife in the continent. There we go, that's better. Stupid man. Uh, I, I guess there's no uh, picking up dog poop around that area if they're incontinent. Or there's more of it. I'm sorry. I doubt there's dogs there. Uh, there's dogs everywhere. What are you talking about? Not in the Amazon. Not there's got to be at least one. Maybe one. Yeah. Maybe one. God, oh, man. Goodness. Whew. Number 80. One third of Latin America's population can be found in Brazil. Quite easily, actually. It's not like they're hiding. Number 81. The southern Brazilian state of Parana pioneered a program within their prisons where inmates were able to reduce their sentence by four days every month for each book that they had read and wrote a report about as a means to combat overcrowding and encourage the education of prisoners. Number 82. Nice. The town of Santa Rita dos Apucai are giving this system a run for its money by allowing prisoners to power the town using exercise bikes in exchange for sentence reductions. For every three shifts inmates put in powering the car batteries attached to the bikes, they trim a day off their sentence, and not to mention any excess pounds they might have. Number 83. Wow, both those last two. Uh, re I, yeah. I'm for that. Educating or exercising to reduce a sentence. Wow. Wow, that's every three shifts you get a day off. So wow. eight, if let's say a shift is eight hours, right? And that's still a bit long time on a fucking bike. Yeah, yeah. You you would come out of there jacked, or yeah. at least 
I never have slim. to do a single. Have, never have to do a single leg day ever again. Oh my god! My goodness, man! Yeah. Hey, but that's that's a great way to harness energy. Jeez. Yeah. yeah. That'll oh never happen god. in the states. Hell no! That we would we would we would sell it. We'd mm -hmm. sell it. We'd find a way to. Yeah, you know, you know what we do. So yeah, yeah, it's been well documented. It hardly seems possible, but there are places where buying an iPhone is even more expensive than it is now, and Brazil tops that list, with Apple devices setting you back almost twice as much as their American cousins. What? Number 84. Yeah, I read about that. Apparently, from one person that I follow that lives in Brazil, like, you pretty much have to go back to the States when one of your electronic devices gives out. What? Why? Yeah. That's because crazy. They don't they don't build that stuff in Brazil. They don't build wow. laptops or iPhones or uh, DSLR cameras or anything like that. Wow. You basically need to go back to the States to wow. get it fixed. Or you're okay. That's wow. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So don't so don't travel to Brazil with an iPhone. Yeah, or have a backup waiting at home or with you well, and yeah you don't you, yeah you don't want to go you don't want to go to that country with a very high price item right that's very stealable yeah yeah and maybe print out your tickets and don't rely on them being on your smartphone yeah, yeah probably that's a yeah. good idea yeah Woo. four in 2004, a Brazilian eBay user tried to flog an entire aircraft carrier on the site. The listing was ultimately removed, but before then, bids had reached over $5 million. What? That might sound like a fair price, but it's the shipping cost to get you. Number 85. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's God. the shipping price that gets you. Stupid. <laughs> Just stupid. Oh, my God. $5 million for an aircraft carrier? Yeah. <laughs> It oh. reminds me of I knew someone um because my one of my uncles is a, a police officer and works for the FBI. I won't say his name, but uh busted someone because they wrote a check for thirty-six million dollars and tried to cash it. And in that little part where you say what it's for, he wrote rent. <laughs> like, what are you renting? The earth? Yeah. What? Rent? <laughs> Good God, man. Oh, my God. I, I like that to think, was he the same guy that made this eBay account to sell a <laughs> ship? <laughs> Anyone want to buy a spare aircraft carrier? <laughs> Excuse me? Oh, God. Oh, damn. Five. In the Great Depression, many countries were stuck for a way to get their Olympic athletes to California for the 1932 Games. Brazil did so by getting creative, sending 50,000 bags of Brazilian coffee along with the athletes. Nice. Granted, with that much caffeine, they could have run to California from Brazil, but instead, <laughs> the athletes partially funded their own transport, selling the coffee at various ports along the commute. Number 86. Wow. That's a creative That's way. That's creative. Right so they're there. like, they're like, okay, the Games are happening. We don't have the funds to send you, so you will make your own funds. Yeah, and yeah, we'll give you the means to 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 basically pay your way there. Wow. Yeah, yeah like that's like uh, ye olden time ath athletic sponsorship. Like uh, that's a modern equivalent of you know someone being sponsored by Gatorade or yeah. Michael Jordan being sponsored by Nike. Wow. Wow. Okay. I, that's that's a cool little factoid right there. That's for yeah. damn sure. Yeah. Huh. Come on. Fix. Brazil's international football team are the most successful of all time, having won the FIFA World Cup and unbeaten five times. Woo! Moving swiftly on. <laughs> Number 87. One snake per square meter is already too much snakes per square meter, but Brazil's snake island is, guess what, infested with snakes, with up to five per square meter. As you might have guessed, civilians aren't allowed on the land, which is really annoying because I really wanted to go, but ah, oh, damn it, I can't get bludgeoned to death by snakes. Number <laughs> Dang it! Uh, so I, I heard a little bit about Snake Island. Like, yeah. uh, I, I think there's a lighthouse on Snake Island. And I feel like people have to like 
the the snakes there i feel like are venomous and um it, it's an insane like precaution that they have to do to 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 upkeep the lighthouse like only people that are upkeeping the lighthouse and like scientific or biologists or stuff like that to do research on the island are permitted on there and that's yeah. i mean it's absolutely nuts man snake island yeah whoever is upkeeping that lighthouse better be getting paid really well yeah like ah uh, it's like working on an oil rig in the gulf of mexico that level of danger or like crabbing up in uh the alaskan sea or something like that yeah there's no way like oh yeah by the way there's a bunch of these little effing snakes that are going to effing try to kill you so yeah. okay cool, fair enough yeah Whew. Number 88. When they hosted the 2014 Football World Cup, Brazil spent the equivalent of 11 billion of your finest US dollars on infrastructure improvements to prepare for the event. Comparatively, America itself spent just 30 million dollars on their 1994 World Cup, which comes to about 50 million dollars today, and even then it's still 220 times cheaper. Num ah, that's interesting to see what we're going to spend, what all of North America is going to spend on the World Cup in 2026. It's but going to be nuts yeah this is but it's a joint venture between the united states canada and mexico so hopefully they're splitting that that check yeah hopefully hopefully we'll see we'll see i feel like the drama is brewing yeah yeah we're less we're about two two and change years away from it and my god it's is it i hope it's not a deal of us is uh going to pay it all up front and just ask Canada and Mexico to Venmo them for it. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. That, that would be funny. No, just here's, here's my number. Just Venmo it. Like what? Yeah. <laughs> That'd be awesome. <laughs> oh my God. Dude. Yeah. Mexico will probably take cash app. Yeah, cash app. hundred percent. hundred percent. Cash app. <laughs> like, oh no, no, no. Cash app only. Yeah. Oh yeah. man. Number 89. In the Brazilian municipality of Laguna, fishermen have had some help from a pod of bottlenose dolphins who use coordinated tail slaps to herd fish towards the waiting hooks and nets. Nice. Which is cool and all that, but whatever happened to marine life camaraderie? Pretty sure I didn't see that in Finding Dory. <laughs> Number 90. Brazil were the first country to impose a blanket ban on all forms of indoor tanning for all ages due to the medical risk it can pose. And probably also because it just looks terrible sometimes. <laughs> Number 91. I thought we were done with football, but no, okay, fine. The only national football team to have never lost to Brazil is Norway, who have played four matches against them, drawing two and winning two, right in their goal hole. Number 92. Wow. Uh, Norway I has never lost to Brazil. Well, I mean, how old is this video again? Uh, let's see. It can't be that old. Uh, four years ago, January 4th, 2020. So... I, don't I would know. have to see. I'd have to see if Brazil lost to an, to Norway. Yeah, or if they well, even played. I don't even know if they played. Generally. Yeah, yeah. We'll we'll have to run that back. <clears throat> Two. There's a cashew tree in Brazil with a rare genetic mutation, which I guess makes it an X tree. Diddly -da -da -da. Diddly -da -da -da. The mutation made the tree grow to a point that it now covers roughly seven thousand five hundred meters. But the real question is, how big are the cashews? Number ninety-three. The guy everyone thinks invented the car but didn't, Henry Ford, piled his money into rubber plantations in the Amazon with towns surrounding where workers could live. The extremely modestly titled Fordlandia ultimately failed and remains an eerie ghost town in the middle of the forest, just waiting for a horror film to be made about it. Mm. Number 94. All right, we're going to need some context on that one. That is it for sale. We should totally buy it. <laughs> Flip it, make it into an Airbnb. Become one of those... Uh, those tech bros that uh is like i made a million dollars on airbnb yeah you buy can my, too buy my buy, classes link in description god mm. Brazil's other abandoned and almost definitely haunted tourist attractions include the Viaduct Protobras, a stretch of road in a sao paulo jungle and the terra encantada theme park straight out of scooby-doo uh all those Give me the heebie-jeebies right there. One million percent. What is a road just doing in a forest? Mm -hmm. What? What? I there's no context behind it. Was it some obscure art sculpture? Because we know how artists like to do that shit. Like, what was that? Yeah. Was there anything connecting to it ever? Are there any cars on top of it? 
I need to know these things. Yeah. At night, does it open into a portal and go to another dimension? Yeah. Yeah, is pretty that, much. Is that, is that in where Back to the Future, where Doc Martin was like, we don't, where we're going, we don't need roads. That's where he started. And <laughs> That's went, where he started. He just went, that's enough road to get to 88 miles an hour. Yes. Right there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Number 95. In 2011, a team of urologists studied almost 500 men from rural Brazil into penile cancer and stumbled upon the troubling finding that 35% of them had engaged in extra, uh, activity with an animal. Not the same animal, though. That would be horrific, wouldn't it? Number 96. Oh, my God. We knew y'all were sexually active down there, but that's a little much. Okay. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. My goodness. And you're not even wrapping that rascal up. What are you oh doing, Brazilian my men? Shit, man. Okay. Uh, okay. They're out there. Cool. Thank God rubber is a big industry Jesus down there. Christ, bro. Or, or, but that's then they're not even using it. Yeah. That's uh. absolutely nuts. That's <laughs> nuts. That's oh, a lot shit. of nuts. All right. Way too many nuts in places it shouldn't be. Yeah. Oh. Good God. <sighs> Dicks. Why are you lying, Brazil nuts? Why are you always lying? Turns out not only are they more closely related to blueberries, but the world's leading exporter of Brazil nuts is actually Bolivia. They're responsible for half the world's Bolivia berries, as they'll now henceforth be known as, with Brazil only providing a meager 40%. Number 97. Brazil is usually renowned for its welcoming people and its rich tourist culture, but they might not get that vibe from the city of No Me Talk. That's if they manage to translate it to the phrase, don't touch me. Number 98. Wow. Since 2011, Brazil has had one of the strictest no-smoking policies in the Americas. The act is banned in all enclosed public places except designated smoking areas, and failure to comply could stick you with a hefty fine. Number 99. Instead, you may be thinking of investing in an e-cigarette. But they've also been banned in Brazil since 2009, owing to a lack of significant data suggesting that they're safe for use. Number 100. In Brazilian banks, the use of cell phones is prohibited as a means to protect against the even more frowned upon act of bank robbery and theft. Cue the legal conundrum that when the bank you're in gets robbed and you don't know if you're allowed to get your phone out to call the police. Number 101. Dilma Rousseff became the first ever woman to be elected as Brazil's president in 2010. Nice. Between 2011 and 2016, she was elected for two terms and was a shining light for women in politics. Right up until the point she was impeached and removed from office for criminal administrative misconduct. Oh. Well, anyway, that was 101 fact about Brazil. Which one's your favourite? Have you ever been to Brazil before? Should I go to Brazil? Let me know in the comments down below. Give this video a like and subscribe to One On Facts if you haven't done so already. Because if not, why not? Huh? I actually want an answer. Why not? In the meantime, hey, two videos on screen right now. You know the drill. Click on one of them. Click on both of them, actually, and watch one right after the other. That's how the cool kids do it. Ciao. Wow. That was a lot very quick, bro. Yeah, Holy another rap. But I will say it did better than the Geography Now Brazil, but that was because it was an earlier one. But yeah. we got more from this this one than we did the Geography Now, but that's, that's just the nature. I can't fault Barb too much for that. No, no, and this is... This is, I feel like this is on par with random facts. This yep. is, it, I, I, I didn't gleam too much insider information from it. There's all yeah. interesting facts. Percent. This is what I would call pub facts. Pub trivia facts. That's right here. Yeah. And, and uh, there's just one person that emailed us three different emails on a Friday night <laughs> once about Brazil. And they're still sitting in there. And I read one of them. Yeah. Did read one. I was like, "Wow, that's a lot. This is in depth. That's I, a I, lot." And, and hey, that's what we asked for. So we got um, some of them from is. there, and we look forward to seeing more down below of yep. uh, what y'all want us to check out when it comes to Brazil. Keep yeah. this learning conversation going. All Very right? important. Yeah. That's let, how we and, learn our stuff. And let us know what other facts they missed. There's just 101 right here. There's got to be a lot more. At least 102 out there. Yeah. At yeah. least 102. So yeah. that's, that's, hey man, I, I like it because this is the real, I, I don't know. This is the, to me, this is, I love random facts. I yeah. love random facts, off the yeah. stuff. I'm there for it. And I, I that, that is, this is my kind of video, 100%. Heck, so. this is always fun to check out. Yep. Anyway, y'all, thanks for watching. Consider subscribing, watching another video. And what else, Dan? 
unplug and do something epic, guys. We'll see y'all next time. Later. Fellas, we could be that mistake. Let's do this. <laughs>